Okay, so y'all have heard me talk about it for quite a while. I've mentioned it a few times about making a uh, water filter out of materials that you would find in an urban setting. Because y'all have probably seen my previous video of the bamboo water filter using the sand, the charcoal, and the gravel. And y'all say, well, there's, you know, bamboo's not available everywhere. Well, that's true. Guess what is? Cans. So guess what? I'll show you how you can use those cans along with some gravel, some sand, and this right here is just plain old charcoal from burned oak and it's been crushed up real fine. Now if you don't have a campfire or a fireplace where you can make your own charcoal, then you can always go to the store and buy a small bag of lump charcoal to keep on hand to make charcoal like this. Do not buy the, uh, the briquettes. Those have additives, fillers. Definitely do not buy the match, the, uh, the match light stuff because that has petroleum in it. Just buy a plain old lump charcoal and then just take a rock or a hammer and crush it up like this. Next thing you need is of course fire because without fire you're not going to survive very long. You're going to have to have this to purify water, to cook your food, to keep wild animals at bay. So definitely got to have fire because we need to turn this, this water right here, into something that looks more like this, hopefully. And like I said, I'm going to show you how to do it with these cans right here. So stay tuned. So obviously the first thing is your filtration system. Now as, as I said before, you'll take your gravel and you see here I've got it inside the can. Still got a little moisture on it. Um, the best way to make sure that your material like your gravel and your sand is clean because you don't know if there's animal feces, urine, other contaminants in it, is to put it in a can, take it down into the water and just keep putting the water in there and shaking it up and pouring off the uh, cloudy water until you get it reasonably clear and then take your can and put it in the fire and just heat up whatever's in the can be it the the gravel the sand crushed oyster shells and uh, until there's no more steam coming out and that point it should be fairly clean and it's got hot enough to kill any pathogens that may be in it okay so there's your gravel this one right here is the sand, as you can see. This one right here contains your charcoal. All right, and if you'll notice what I did here is I punched holes with a knife in the bottom of each can. The charcoal the sand and the gravel multiple small holes not one large hole because you're going to be running some pretty dirty water through there and it's probably going to clog so multiple small holes is the way to go now ideally we want to let our water stand for a few minutes when we collect it because you can already see that it's beginning to settle out somewhat so when it does that whatever container you collect it in, be it a, an empty water bottle, plastic container like this, uh, drink can, whatever. Let it stand for about 15, 20 minutes. Of course, in this case, this has only been standing for a few minutes and it's already settling out. So, and it looks like there's some, possibly some stuff swimming around in there. Yeah, we, we definitely want to filter that out. I'm going to show you how here in just a minute. All right, next step, put your water in your can like this, place it in your fire, and then wait for it to boil. This step is necessary because we want to try to kill the pathogens in that, and that means a rolling boil for two minutes. Not just a little bit of steam coming off of it, a rolling boil. That's the only way you're going to guarantee killing pathogens. And then we're going to pass it through the filter. Now, 
as you can see we're going to put the can holding the charcoal on the bottom the can holding the sand is going to go on top of that and one thing I forgot to mention take a rock or the butt of your knife and kind of dimple that in right there that way when the water drips through from the can above it and these perforated holes it'll go ahead and pass through that hole there and it won't back up so you can stack these of course but if you're going to put a collection container underneath it you know you're going four cans high that gets kind of precarious so it's probably best if you have the universal fix-all duct tape and just tape the sections together like that so they don't fall apart and no water leaks out of them hopefully and you know truthfully urban situation you should have some duct tape laying around your house if nothing else if not in your bug out kit uh, barring duct tape I suppose you could take cordage wrap it tight and haft the sections together that would also work but, uh, other than that I think we're getting close to being ready here in a couple more minutes we'll be ready to try this filter out uh, one other way you could do it if you had a clean sock you just obviously just drop this right down inside of the sock or if you had a clean cloth you could lay it long ways and roll it up to hold them together but like I said duct tape pretty surefire method there now a quick note about your can for boiling obviously when I drink my beers I break the tabs off so this one doesn't have a tab um, if you can find one with a tab still on it that'd be real good that way you can leave the tab up and then you've got the hole on top of the tab that you can use like a stick with a little hook on the end of it to put through there to pick it up in this case here I'm just going to use this bent rod to pick it up out of the fire when it's time to uh, bring it out and, and pour it through the filter alright so that's a rolling boil right there and that's what you need to do for two minutes to kill the pathogens so with that done we are ready for the final stage pour it through the filter alright here we go moment of truth got our filter assembled and ready to go we've got our water in our cans it's been boiled I've let it cool down now where I can touch the cans without being scalded and we've got a container to catch the uh, water in that we're going to filter of course you could use another can but for the purpose of this I want to use a clear container so I can show you so here we go pour the water in There's to be clean water coming out the bottom. It's got a little bit of uh, charcoal staining in it, but that's fine. It's not going to kill you. It's like taking activated charcoal tablets. All right. The main thing is that the water has been boiled for two minutes, so that's automatically going to kill your pathogens. Basically, all you're trying to do here is just clean it up a little bit. And this will definitely do it. So, there you have it. There is the before. Here is the after. from dirty fish waste sorry guys to clean safe drinkable water now there's still a little bit of yellow in there that's possibly from the sand possibly from the gravel maybe from the charcoal um, I discarded the first little bit 
that I strained off to get rid of the uh, excess charcoal so that basically what I have here now is water with very little sediment that has been boiled to kill the pathogens and then filtered through gravel sand and then charcoal to purify it and while it may not be quite as clear as this bottled water here it's damn sure safer to drink than this so with that being said I always test my own product and I'm gonna drink a little bit of this right here just to prove it to you and bottoms up tastes pretty good I would definitely drink it in a survival situation much safer than ditch water so there you go right there a couple of final notes your uh, charcoal as I may have mentioned before uh, you definitely want to make it out of something like oak gum maple walnut ash hickory something like that do not make it out of pine do not make it out of cedar definitely do not make it out of anything like oleander or water hemlock unless you want to die your cans uh, preferably should be sterilized by heating them up in a fire uh, mine of course I know where they came from it's not a questionable source I just rinsed them out with water before I used them your materials such as your gravel and your sand need to be pre-rinsed as I mentioned put them in the cans keep putting water in there shake it up pour off the uh, excess until you get relatively clear water and then it needs to be sterilized by heating it in the can on the fire until basically no more steam comes out of the can at which point it should be safe to use so that's about it thanks for watching till next time signing off